Friends, today is Friday, June 21, 2024, and we're going to learn something about the priesthood today, which you may not know. Here it is, Leviticus 10, 11 and 12. Moses says to Aaron, you are to teach the Israelites hmm, all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them through, Mo through, through, through Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, take the grain offering that is left from the Lord's offerings by fire and eat, eat it unleavened beside the altar. It is most holy. So here's another assignment for the priests. We think of them as being involved, don't we, most of the time? in rituals and in rites. They are performing the sacrifices by which people are, are finding at one -ment, atonement with God. And then they also, we learned yesterday, are able to bless people who are freed from their guilt and shame and the thing, their unholiness, and they are put in a position to be able to receive and enjoy God's presence. So it's, it's rituals, right? But here we find out that there's also teaching and, and indeed it's comprehensive it's all the teach all the things that the lord gave to moses well that's the torah and so um this is the the wonderful stories and the wonderful laws that god gave to moses and so this is a uh it's a big job a, a whole second job and it, it does several things it, it makes us be able to identify more with the priests of ancient israel because they become more like uh, modern ministers who are using scripture uh, and, and exegetes and expositors who are trying to connect scripture with the lives of people and and to teach uh, the way of the of, of, of Jesus out of the Bible. Uh, this is this too was part of the priestly task. They were to help people become holy by familiarizing them with God's directions and commands, so they could be more like God. Um, it's um it's it's quite a business it's quite a business to also be a teacher uh, but rites and rituals have to connect with commands and instructions don't they the rites and the rituals are preparation put people in a uh, a new position so they can receive and then follow more effectively the commands and the instructions because they'll be able to experience more fully the presence of god and they're free from guilt and shame there's ceremony and there is learning, right? There's grace received and truth followed. And this is part of the rhythm and the necessarily balancing aspects of, uh, of life with God. You and I also share this task. We share the task of standing between to convey God's grace and forgiveness to people like the priest did. We share the task of speaking out blessing into their lives. And we share the teaching task. And this is made very clear in Deuteronomy 6, which is a fun passage for you to go back and read. Love the Lord your God with your heart and soul and mind and strength. What's the first way you can do that? It's by teaching the people around you, by being an example, and by creatively impacting uh, this generational task that we have of bringing people up in the, into faith and life, orienting them, giving them a worldview, uh, and a structure and practices they can use in order to connect with God. And anyone involved in family life is involved in that teaching, even if they're not professionally a teacher. We can convey the things we learn about God with energy, imagination, intelligence, and love. Let's pray. Lord, teach us so we can have something to convey. We want to teach as well as serve. Give us the right words to share in the right way in order to bless and deepen the faith of others around us. We ask in your son's name. Amen.